Good afternoon to all. Let us have a remedy of yesterday's test first. So this was your question number one given to you. The figure was given in which your DE is given parallel to AC and this BE upon AC is also given equal to BC upon CP. On behalf of this information, you need to prove BD upon DA is equal to BC upon CP. So this was the question based upon your direct application of basic proportionality theorem. So when you will be writing the proof, so BD upon DA, BD upon DA, I need to prove is equal to BC upon CP. So BD upon DA, if I just give a look to this figure, means in triangle BCA. So if I take this triangle BCA, somewhere I'm getting BE upon EC. BE upon EC is equal to what? BD upon DA. BD upon DA. Why? By basic proportionality theorem as it is given that DE is parallel to AC. This is given by VPT because if this side is parallel to this side then in this triangle this side which is parallel to the third side divides those two sides in equal proportion that is the statement of your basic proportionality theorem and give it number one then also you just take attention BE upon EC is given equal to what BC upon CP this is given and you take it number two as we did in our first the second exercise that was the exercise based upon your application of basic proportionality theorem most of the time we have compared the result one result we were getting somewhere the conditions were given to us and second we were getting from the figure by applying the basic proportionality theorem the same concept we are using here now you just can compare here BE upon EC is equal to BD upon DA and here BE upon EC is equal to BC upon CP. So from there you can get the result that BD upon DA is equal to BC upon CP. So from 1 and 2 BD upon DA will be equal to BC upon CP. So three marks are there uh, for given to draw the figure and to prove one mark is there one mark for this step one mark for this step including your answer so in that way you can go for step marking to evaluate yourselves so this question was carrying three marks i hope this time the test i have given to you was based upon basic proportionality theorem it converts area theorem and criterions all four questions i picked up in that way only and i don't think anything difficult was asked but still you need to pay attention while you are doing and mostly i have tried to give you the question based upon your ncrt only so here is the question number two in which this was the figure given to you and you see Whatever is given, write that information very clearly. That is definitely going to help you somewhere in getting your proof. Make a note of that, please. Moreover, the marks are there for your step writings. And here, triangle NSQ is also given congruent to triangle MTR. These two triangles are also congruent. And what you need to prove is, triangle PTS is similar to triangle PRQ. So here this is PST. You draw those triangles. This is PST. I need to prove similar to this triangle PRQ. Somewhere PRQ. And you know okay, when we are, we are reaching there somewhere in proving a triangle. So we need to check the proportionality of their sides as well. If possible then we can use the concept to prove the triangles similar to each other but here what we have to do let us see what you can do is you use this if angle 1 is equal to angle 2 if angle 1 is equal to angle 2 what does this imply ps is equal to pt ps is equal to pt somewhere the question number 6 in your criterion exercise are based 
where the triangles were given congruent to u if you remember that so in that also i use this concept c if i can prove here this upon this that is ps upon sq and pt upon tr are in equal proportion then by using the converse of basic proportionality theorem i definitely will be in position to take this st parallel to qr and if st will be parallel to qr then ps upon sq should be equal to pt upon tr so by the converse st will be parallel to qr once you have proved st is parallel to qr then your this angle one will be equal to this angle because these will be the corresponding angles and that you can see here this angle when we will be equal to this angle so and angle p is common in both the triangles comfortably i'll be able to write the triangles similar no doubt should be there to anyone about that so i'll do that part only now i will give it number 1 also now i will keep a watch upon this sq triangle this nsq triangle nsq is congruent to triangle prq sorry mtr triangle mtr so i'll pick this do you think that sq somewhere is the side of triangle nsq of course it is will be equal to i need ps upon sq is equal to pt upon tr then you see this triangle t uh, this side tr definitely is the side of this triangle mtr is equal to tr and reason is cp cp ct congruent part of congruent triangles are always congruent so sq is equal to tr i am taking it number 2 because this is given so on behalf of this these parts will be equal now i said ki ps upon from 1 and 2 if you divide from 1 and 2 if you divide this upon this ps upon sq definitely will be equal to what pt upon tr pt upon tr so ps upon sq this upon this is equal to pt upon tr so therefore in triangle pqr pqr your st will be parallel to what qr st will be parallel to qr by the converse of by the converse of your basic proportionality theorem by the converse of basic proportionality theorem please make a note of that and uh, if this happens then suppose i am writing here angle 3 so this implies angle 1 is equal to angle 3 because these will be the corresponding angles so here is 1 now and here is 3 so in triangle pst and triangle pqr angle p is equal to angle p common and angle 1 is equal to angle 3 so here angle p is equal to angle p common and angle 1 is equal to angle 3 proved these are the corresponding angles as i said that this is parallel to this so corresponding angles hence triangle pst that i need to prove or your pts is similar to triangle prq so that is the proof for your question number 2 so weightage again for given and all one mark you can put there and there here for this One and two, one and a half, and then remaining part, whatever you are concluding after these two equation, one and a half for that. So one and a half, one and a half, three, and one for the information that is given to prove with figure. In that way, you can evaluate yourself to get your score out of four. Then third question again, it was given somewhere based upon your NCERT exercise. where the isosceles right triangle is given to you and this was right angled uh, suppose i'm taking it b c and then a if this is isosceles given please take the side this is a now the two triangles equilateral triangles two equilateral triangles were the part of this figure somewhere one was described on its one of the side and another was described on its hypotenuse 
So you know very clearly when you will be applying the Pythagoras, somewhere your hypotenuse will be equal to under root 2a. So then under root 2a and under root 2a, all three sides because triangle is equal to total, will be the length of the three sides which are lying on its hypotenuse. Here nothing to do, this is a, this is also equilateral, a, a, a. So what I need to prove is, I need to prove that is mentioned here, the triangle described, triangle described on one of the side is half the side of the, is half the area of the triangle described on its hypotenuse. So to prove area of triangle AEP is equal to half the area of triangle ADC. Fine. Now in your proof, straight away you use uh, as we know AC square in triangle in triangle ABC is equal to AB square plus BC square. So AC square is equal to A square plus A square because this is given. Because AB is equal to BC. This is conditional. So that's why this is important to mention in your answer. It should be the step of your answer somewhere definitely. I'm not adding the things from my own side and I never can use that from my own side. Because it is given that's why I have to Mm, I have to make it a part of my answer. So AC square will be equal to 2A square. This implies AC is equal to root 2A. In your textbook, if you remember, that was the square. And that there we use the property of diagonal of the square is equal to root 2 into side. So same thing was used there also. But that again was the property in question was conditional. Here also. So I have to mention that. So therefore, your area of equilateral triangle equilateral triangle which one ADC root 3 by 4 a square root 3 by 4 a square that is equal to root 3 by 4 under root 2 is 2 and that is a square you cut it so this is your number 1 also area of another equilateral triangle another equilateral triangle that will be equal to what under root 3 by 4 a square simply under root 3 by 4 a square equilateral triangle which one is that AEB please write the name of the triangle because one we have to take which is described on side of the triangle and one which is on the hypotenuse and take it number two now area of this AEB to that of area so I will write area of triangle AEB to that of area of triangle your ADC is equal to write this ratio there here it is area of triangle AEB under root 3 by 4 under root 3 by 4 a square divided by what under root 3 by 2 a square under root 3 by 2 a square and finally you can do the calculation by writing the reciprocal of this that is 2 uh, upon under root 3 a square so this you can cancel 2 on the and 2 to the so now therefore when you will cross multiply area of your triangle AB, AEB will be equal to because the result of this calculation is only half that is equal to half so when you will cross multiply the area of triangle AEB will be equal to half the area of triangle ADC so that's all about your question number Three. Then the last question, that is question number four. Again, stepwise marking, please do for information one mark and then to calculate the area of one triangle again one and a half and to calculate the triangle one and a half including your answer. So in that way you can go for the marking. In question number four, again the figure was given to you somewhere. ABC was the triangle given to in which AB is equal to AC and somewhere the D point was marked on this side AC. So what was given? AB is equal to AC. This was given. Also, uh, 
this was given ki BC square is equal to AC into CD. On behalf of this information, you were asked to prove that BD is equal to BC. So definitely you have to do the construction. What is that? Join B with D. So that you can join here B with D. Now what you need to prove is this BD is equal to what BC means I need to focus my attention somewhere upon these two angles if I can prove equal so that can help me a lot to uh, get the angles equal or the sides equal or if I just cannot go for the angles I can compare the sides in ratio with respect to the two triangles that is one is your ABC I am getting ABC and another I am getting is your BDC. So you focus your attention in your proof. One whole triangle ABC and another somewhere you can think about BDC. BDC in one way or other. If I just can prove these two triangles similar, why this is easy to prove? Because in ABC, angle C somewhere is the part here and here also. So one thing I am getting is common. Now another in my proof, if you will use how I can prove these two triangles similar so in when it is given that BC square when it is given BC square is equal to AC into CD so if you will split this so definitely you will be getting BC into BC so BC one BC I am keeping here and CD for writing to this side that will be equal to AC upon BC is it or not definitely so you we'll give it number one simply I have expanded this notation and written in the form of proportionality so this is useful because without using this given i will never be able to prove the required result so that is uh, my attention here or intentionally i am taking this first and then uh, in your triangle abc now you see this bc upon cd now you compare this this upon this I am getting is equal to this upon this definitely. Yeah, of course this is there. This, this upon this. Now I am getting is equal to this upon this. And the included angle is common. So now you can mention that in triangle ACB and triangle BCD. What I am getting? This AC upon BC is equal to BC upon CD. AC upon BC is equal to here BC upon CD and angle C is equal to angle C which is the common angle hence you can conclude that triangle ABC is similar to triangle BDC triangle ABC is similar to triangle BDC so once these triangles are similar to each other then their corresponding sides again will be in proportion so I am looking for this BD somewhere. So I have to use this notation. So therefore AB upon BD. Therefore AB upon BD. Somewhere I can use BC upon CD also. Once you have proved this triangle similar. So you can make it. Why? Because I need to prove BD is equal to BC somewhere. And uh, AB upon BD is equal to your BC upon CD. But you said that AB is equal to AC. So you write here AC upon BD is equal to BC upon CD. Here you can mention AB is equal to AC. AB is equal to AC. So fine. You remove replace this AB by AC and then AC upon BD will be equal to BC upon CD. Now AC upon BD and BC upon CD. So BC upon CD you are saying is equal to AC upon BC also. So BC upon CD. Now you take it number 2. So AC upon BC. I am getting is equal to BC upon CD. So if I will compare this so from 1 and 2 can I write ki AC upon BC is equal to AC upon BD. Mention that finally from 1 and 2 your AC upon BD is equal to what 
बी सी अपॉन ए सी अपॉन बी डी इज इक्वल टू वॉट ए सी अपॉन बी सी ए सी अपॉन बी सी सो ए सी आई जस्ट कैन कैंसल विद ए सी आई एम लेफ्ट विद बी डी एंड बी सी ऑनली सो दिस इज वाइज बी डी इज इक्वल टू बी सी वॉट यू आर सपोज टू प्रूव बी डी इज इक्वल टू बी सी सो हेंस प्रूव्ड अगेन वन मार्क यू कैप की प्रिजर्व फॉर योर दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन गिवन टू प्रूव कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड देन अगेन वन एंड हाफ मार्क यू कैन प्रूव अप टू हेयर देन वन मार्क फॉर दिस दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड वन फॉर दिस इन दैट वे स्टेप वाइज यू कैन गो फॉर फोर मार्क्स सो आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू विल बी एबल टू वेल्यूएट योर सेल्स करेक्टली इन द एंड इन द सेफ मैनर ऑल्सो दिस इज द टाइम वेन यू जस्ट कैन evaluate yourselves in true manners that whatever was taught to you did you understand that or not so will be a great help to gain the self confidence as well as uh to provide a kind of positive feedback to yourselves uh which i do feel is one of the essential tool for a student from the progress point of view so hope all of you are doing well and uh, following the instructions very very carefully and doing the things sincerely at your homes so that's all about your uh, remedy of the test secondly i started the solution of your uh, uh linear equation in two variables yesterday so first of all i will like to correct one mistake i did yesterday when i have written the standard form that was somewhere your ax plus bx plus cy please uh, uh, is equal to 0 in that form so this was the mistake i committed there i was just going through my lecture then i realized that this somewhere i uh, wrote wrongly so please do the correction i hope all of you are familiar with that because you did this in class 9 so sometime we also are mistaken somewhere so please do some time the corrections at your own level also so you know what should be this so this is exactly is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 if anybody is not known to this fact please do this correction very carefully ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 so here it is a1 here it is a2 here it is b1 here it is b2 c1 and c2 and secondly i said ki if the variables you are keeping to the one side that was correct and this you can shift to i am not taking minus sign what is the use of that negative somewhere in algebraic calculations we will be finding the need of this discussion so i will come to that discussion during that particular method only okay, what happens when we are taking this how to make a change in the sign somewhere right now no need to change the sign so directly you can write the equation in this form 1 2 1 2 1 2 so one standard form is this and one standard form is in this so yesterday this was written somewhere wrongly please make a correction x cannot be repeated the one variable only so c is the constant term will never be carrying any variable there so please make a note of that so this part was wrong in yesterday's discussion correct will be this one only and second is this one so accordingly you can go ahead so i think uh you have started your work the concept i have discussed with you three relationship a1 upon a2 is not equal to b1 upon b2 then it was a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is not equal to c1 upon c2 and in third case it was a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is equal to c1 upon c2 so here the solution is possible here the solution is possible unique solution and many solution here the no solution was possible if i will draw the graph lines will be parallel so on behalf of these three before starting the exercise i would like to ask you people please go through your second exercise first and whenever the solutions are possible whenever the solutions are possible lines are called consistent consistent this word we are using consistent lines or consistent equations and when the solution is not possible those are called inconsistent so many question are based 
uh, upon this information in second exercise so hope that you will start few of the questions from second exercise tomorrow i will start with the graphical solution that is of your first exercise so today you just go through the solution of your test whatever i have given to you and start with the second exercise of your textbook on behalf of this information what was the part of my discussion yesterday and today also i'm recapping and please do not forget to do this correction in your standard form of yesterday's task thank you